My name is Sebashish. I'm an educator and a long-time free and open source advocate and community catalyst. Hello, I'm Prati. I'm a student and a contributor to open source projects like Wikipedia, Wikisource and others. So today, Pratik and I will be talking about how we can preserve languages, especially the endangered languages, and how we can use digital tools to grow those languages. Almost half of the 6,909 living languages across the world are dying in a century's time, and the most linguistically diverse places like Papua New Guinea uh, and India are the most dangerous places for the language. Um, so let's discuss uh, why languages die and how languages die. Um, one of the major reasons is the public policy. A lot of countries have uh, official languages and the official languages are the uh, ones that the government promotes and supports, whereas there are, there are all these indigenous and endangered languages that are not supported by the government and they kind of vanish from people's tongues slowly. Knowledge of native languages does not pay off and um, you know this is kind of related to the previous point uh, where where the government is not taking much initiative about the language preservation uh, you know there there aren't enough jobs and uh, and that's how languages vanish slowly when people migrate from one place to another place their their children get to learn the the language that is spoken in the place they migrate to but at the same time the kids don't get to learn their parents languages so that's how languages slowly vanish from people's tongues a lack of digital tools is another big problem you know the languages that pay off uh, normally would have a lot of tools to kind of grow the languages whereas uh, those um, linguistic and a lot of other tools are not available for the uh, indigenous and endangered languages. So those languages kind of kind of die out. With these languages dying, there dies a wealth of knowledge forever. Plus, when we don't have information available in multiple languages and people's native languages, we are not allowing monolingual people access knowledge, which is a human right. Across the world, there are about 285 million visually impaired people, out of which 39 million people are blind. And this is this is really a concerning number. These people also need a lot of digital tools, especially linguistic digital tools like text-to-speech and screen reader to access information. Um, it's unfortunate that you know, most endangered languages don't have digital tools at this moment uh, for any kind of linguistic documentation. And we have to ask ourselves this question. Isn't our technology focusing only on a narrow range of languages? Uh, whereas, whereas we have so many languages across the world and we're only focusing on building tools for just a few languages. So, you know, we have our empathy for the languages. But what we can do, I mean, the government isn't doing anything. The, the lawmakers aren't doing anything. Uh, what we as individual or even organizations can do uh, to transform the state of these languages. And, and again, what, what the languages actually need. So the languages need a lot of educational content. They need promotional tools. They need advertisements. They need a lot of media content. They need a lot of digital tools, which is very important. People have to be able to write and communicate in their language. Um, when we see that the government isn't doing much, Maybe open source is the hope because it's open, it's collaborative, and a lot of people can take part. And um, when we talk about open open source tools, uh, and especially the the text to speech tools, there used to be something called concatenative text to speech, which is basically creating a large database of speech fragments recorded from a single speaker, and then combining uh, combining those uh, fragments and to make words. So it'll sound like human voice, but the problem with those tools, it'll, it'll not contain any kind of emotion. You won't be able to have intonation in that kind of text-to-speech. And that was made possible by Google using something called WebNet. WebNet is driven by an artificial intelligence. It's really complex. What it does is it has a library of uh, voices, and then it kind of, it kind of, uses that uses those fragments but also apply some kind of rule so that you can you can not just 
change the expression. You can not just add emotion to the voice, but you can also add things like breathing sounds in between so it sounds more natural, control the speed and stuff like that. But again, if even if you're using AI, you still need a lot of voice recordings by humans. Even if the, the endangered languages die tomorrow, if we preserve them, we can use different tools and we can recreate content in those languages. So I was, I was contributing to Wiktionary, which is a sister project of Wikipedia and a free dictionary. And I couldn't find uh, words, recorded words, which was really important to have in Wiktionary. So I started recording words and I tr started reaching out to a lot of developers in the open source community. And I found one that was developed by a uh, Tamil language Wikipedia and his name is T. Srinivasan. Uh, what he created was really Im interesting. It was a Python uh, based tool that can be installed on uh, Linux and Mac and then you can use it to record a large number of words. So I started creating a, a few tutorials to make it easier for other people to use it. I also realized that it's, it has to be connected with, with a couple of other tools. And that's how Kothabidana was born. And this was to create an open toolkit, which actually contains a lot of free and open source software and open educational resources so, so, so that someone can learn how to use these tools and open data sets. And the workflow uh, is kind of really simple. First, you record uh, and then you parallelly monitor uh, the recording and finally you can save them as as web files which is compatible with platforms like Wikimedia Commons and then you clean up the audio recordings using a tool called Audacity and then you create the metadata and then upload them on Commons using a tool called Paddy Pan. So using Kotavidano is really simple and easy. You can download the toolkit from bitlybitly.com slash k-o-t-h-a and most of the information is given in the toolkit to how to run this tool and record words, create metadata and upload them on, uh, in, in, in an open repository like the Wikimedia Commons. Now Pratik would be sharing about the iOS version uh, just in case you're using an iPhone or iPad. In this video I'll be explaining how to record words for Kadabidhanu using a free iOS app called Workflow. So Workflow is this iOS app that allows anyone to build automated actions that can be executed upon just about anything. It was very recently acquired by Apple and has been made free just after the acquisition. So all you need to do is to first go to the App Store, search Workflow and you'll end up with this Apple Design Award winner. Download and install the app. Then go to the link in the video description which links to the GitHub repository storing all of the files for Kathabidana. Click on the workflow store link and you'll be redirected to the workflow I created all inside the app. First you'd like to edit the parameters as per your language and add your name to the metadata. Also make sure you've got the description just right. This workflow also uses an FTTT integration to add recorded words automatically to Google Sheets. So you can then use the data to batch upload the files you created. So make sure you've granted permission to the FTTT action and make something that works for your situation. This workflow by default records audio in the .wav format. This is the best, but you're free to change it if that's better for you. Now plug in some headphones and open up the word list which you have to record. Select the text and now share, then run the Kathabidana workflow. Click on done and it shows up a notification. In case it doesn't, go back and ensure that your do not disturb mode is turned off. The notification system should be working just right this time. Workflow will show up the words one by one. When you're ready, tap once on the screen to start the recording. Tap again to stop it. You can also set a default duration for each recording. In case you're unsatisfied, you have one more chance. Once you're done, click on save and export the file to a documents manager or a cloud service that uses Apple's Cloud Picker. This step will become a lot simpler if you open the document service side by side on an iPad. So there's not too much of jumping between apps. So far, there are two, more than 2,000 uh, recordings that we have made and uh, three different languages are using this tool, Bengali, Odia, and Tamil. Uh, and we're reaching out to more community members and trying to uh, teach them how to use it. Uh, 1,500 plus words have been used uh, on Wiktionary. And we've started using these voice recordings to create text-to-speech. So what happens when, you know, these hundreds and thousands of recordings are created and then preserved in some place? 
So with Katabidana, you can create a talking dictionary. But apart from that, you can also build a lot of tools around it. So you can, like I was saying before, you can use these voice recordings to create a text-to-speech. And these tools can be used to create a you know, spoken version of any text that can be used for, say, language learning lessons, news, emergency announcement, official communications by the government, and machine learning. And all of these can be also used to create, uh, you know, smart homes where you can use Internet of Things to uh, to kind of provide native language support to to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, smart uh, processes and smart devices that are connected with each other. I hope this was useful, but just in case you know you're working with it and you, you face some problem and you want to connect with us, you can always email to us. Um, my email is p s u b h a s h i s h at the gmail dot com, and Pratik's email is p a t t a p r a t e e k at gmail dot com. Thank you so much for listening to us.